Right, hello. Uh, it's now three weeks later. I haven't had the chance to fix the boiler. It's got much worse. Um, so my heating and hot water well, heating's fine. The hot water's still not great. Uh, well, it's getting worse and worse actually. So today I'm going to try and resolve this without having to change that main heat exchanger. Uh, there's a couple of things I'm going to do before I uh, before I get into trying to descale it. I'm just going to check a couple of things that could also cause this issue. So one of them I've got here to show you out of another boiler. So I don't know if you can see that. Oh, oh, oh. So that's a rubber pipe out of a, I uh, don't know, this one may well be a, uh, an Ecomax, but that's what happens to the rubber pipes. Debris builds up on them on the inside and restricts the flow. So your heating will probably work fine, but your hot water will not. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the uh, copper pipe that attaches to this and I'm going to check if this is blocked uh, and there's also a canoe filter below that it's called a canoe filter because it's canoe shaped I'm going to remove that whole manifold and just check that before I do anything else because I don't want to go to the point of descaling the whole boiler if it's just this or that so that's the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to grab the tools and do that now Okay, so I'm going to turn the power off underneath here. Uh, my wife just started running a hot tap. Isn't that brilliant? Drop a towel down, bucket. One, two drain offs. Okay, so. Just a quick recap, you go back to the first video, you will know uh, about this drawing here. Valent heat exchangers, main heat exchangers, the coil, coils are in parallel, so if one blocks, the boiler gets very noisy, um, but continues to work usually. So mine is very was very noisy last week, uh, which is when I discovered the problem. Obviously it's in a loft, so I don't often know about that, um, but that is blocked. Uh, making so or there's some restriction causing it to make noise so I'm just going to check two things it could be other than the heat exchanger because this part is extremely expensive and I'll probably change the boiler if I can't unblock that part so 8mm spanner drain the boiler AOV is already sucking in water, or air, sorry. Just let that drain itself. I'm going to undo the uh, NTC, this is the flow NTC, just squeeze it together and pop it off. I, I just removed that trumpet there for, for access. And I'm going to film in here with my phone, tell you what I'm going to do. On. Okay, so we've got the boiler draining. You can hear the AAV sucking in air. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to undo this connection here, pull the clip out in there. The canoe filter is behind this water pressure sensor in that block. Um, I'm going to just pull the whole block out, I think, for ease of, uh, of showing you guys, basically. So first thing to do is take that pipe out pipe feels quite hard so it definitely has some debris within it this rubber pipe does feel a bit hard I don't squeeze it because if I do all the debris that you saw inside that other pipe will break off and go inside the boiler I'd rather get the pipe out complete and then squeeze it in the bucket of water to get all the debris out so I'll show you that so boilers drained um, as with anything quickly pump the vessel the bubbles crying again but thankfully the wife's here. Okay. This sounds great, doesn't it? Let's try that again, shall we? Okay, so the vessel has half a bar on it still. I haven't pumped that in five years. Last time I serviced that. 
What? You talking to me, baby? Oh. Oh, yeah, it's filming, right? I'm gonna put that on YouTube. No, you're not. <laughs> okay, so have my cup of tea. So again, that vessel. That was last pumped up five years ago and it had lost 0.25 of a bar in five years. So not much. So again, the vessel's pumped, so I'm not gonna get a load of gurgling and water coming out when I'm trying to work on the boiler. Take this clip off here. Let me tell you something, you need to be very careful with this pipe. If you wiggle this pipe, you'll crack this connection here and then it's game over, you need a, uh, a main heat exchanger. So you've got to be really delicate when you wiggle them, you only wiggle them a tiny little bit to try and get them out, otherwise you'll crack this and game over. So I'm just going to take the electrical connections off now. There we go. There's that temperature sensor I unplugged. So that's now off and now I'll just use my long nose pliers and a flat screwdriver to get in there and do that. So, well, this like this. Sorry, YouTube is difficult here. Get this. Just slide the flat in there. Very difficult on an 837. All right, I need two hands for this YouTube. I'm just gonna pull out that clip, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take out the water pressure sensor to give me a bit more access. Um, this has never been changed, this water pressure sensor. So I'm gonna just film this, so. This water pressure sensor has never been changed, which means this clip is gonna hit the heat exchanger. Yeah? Like that, which means you can't remove it fully. So what you need to do with that is then brute force that out of the way and you can re-put it back in from underneath. So, So that's now mullered that clip, but the clip can go be put in from underneath. You don't have to put it in from the same orientation. So we'll pull this out. So obviously I've only drained the boiler side, the heating side of that. So water pressure sensor's coming out now. Again, it's never been out, so it's actually quite stiff in there. There we go. Ooh. Put some debris on there. So I just got that out. Look, it's got a bit of debris on there. There's the canoe filter in the back there, that black thing. It's actually white, the canoe filter. So that could be our problem. That'd be brilliant if that was it. So I didn't expect to find debris in there. So, so let me run something by you here. You can drain these boilers and the water's spotless, okay? Uh, the heating system can be spotless. You do a turbidity test, parts per million are way down there, less than 200 and stuff. And the heat exchangers can still get blocked because they run so hot in there, they bake stuff onto them. Uh, like a you know casserole dish. Stuff gets baked on quite hard and that's what blocks them. I'm hoping now from what I've seen, it's gonna be the canoe filter and the, uh, and the rubber pipe. So next, I'm gonna take this clip out here uh, and then remove the pipe from the manifold. Easy as that. Okay, so I found it incredibly hard to get this to move. So I grabbed the top and pulled it down first. Okay, so now using this leverage, I'm gonna pull this forward, which will loosen it off down here. So now it's moving here. It's all about getting that little bit of movement. So I'm gonna get that out and we'll have a look at it. Oh, brilliant. Okay. So, right. what I'm going to do, I'm going to film up in the heat exchanger with my phone. See if there's any debris up there. All right. So going in. Doesn't look too bad on the coil. Let's film inside here now. Debris in there, that's where, I, that's where I was wiggling it and that's all broken off inside this rubber tube. This tube is hard. 
rock hard. Let me lift it up to the mic and you can listen to how crusty this tube is. This is my setup, GoPro mic, so listen to this. Oh, hit the GoPro. Mm. It's a bit. Definitely a bit, but not that much, actually. I'm afraid I can be pretty sure the tube wasn't the problem. The tube did have debris in it, but it's very, very thin layers. But look, that is not going to cause the restriction on this heat exchanger, unfortunately. Next, we'll take out the manifold and look at the canoe filter. So, I'll take the manifold out, three screws, there, there, and one there that you can't see right now. So, first things first, get the pipe out. So, to get the pipe out, got a back nut there and the main nut there. So, FYI, my screen is broken again. So what I've just done, I've turned on the filling loop, the right hand side of the filling loop, which turns the mains off. So, I'm gonna be removing this plate, I think. But let me, uh, what I'm gonna try and do first is uh, undo the manifold bolts and see if I can drop it down enough once it's loose to, uh, get that clip out that holds the pipe in above it. Oh, nice and tight these ones. Like I say, 10 year old boiler, never had any work done to it, so, other than the diverter. Perfect. Okay, so with undoing the, the valve and the back nut here, and then undoing the three bolts holding it on, I was able to just pull this out. It dropped down enough that it would allow me to get this out without uh, having to take the plate heat exchanger out. So, let me just take this off. Oh, Jesus. So that's that out. Doesn't look like there's too much debris in there, if I'm honest. Can't see anything in there, so let's have a look at this filter here. So there's the canoe filter. You can see it's actually white there. It's a bit dirty there. Bit of debris in it. Not too bad though, I must say. Not as bad as I would have expected. Okay, right, so let me just be clear on this. This pipe here is the flow to the heating system. And as you can see, that canoe filter is only half. It doesn't cover the heating system. Okay, the heating system is not protected from debris. If you look in here, the only thing that's protected from debris is the water pressure sensor through this hole here. And if you look down there, it covers the whole of that side, which is the bypass uh, and the uh, plate heat exchanger. This isn't particularly bad. Anyway, let me let me take that out, clean it up, and I'll show you up there on the good camera. Okay. This is just I'm just gonna break this out. I can't um I can't spend too long off to get this fixed and yeah, this is wedged in there, but it isn't particularly dirty, I must say, so I don't think this is probably this is the problem. Okay, so that filter's out, that filter wasn't the problem. So, unfortunately, I think it is the main heat exchanger here. There ain't gonna be much I can do about it, except try and clean it, so. I'm just cleaning up where all the pipes sit in there. Okay, so here's the manifold out and cleaned. The uh, canoe filter came out in pieces. I couldn't get it out. So there's a bit of it. And the other bit that's meant to go on here, um, the other bit that's meant to go on here is a half that there's part of it. It's only half like that. So this bit here that my thumb's touching, that protects the uh, the plate heat exchanger and the water pressure sensor, and that last bit protects the bypass. Um, and then it comes out to the heating. So the heating's unprotected. But 
ten year old boiler, my boiler, I choose what I do, I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna bother about the filter. Because it ain't done anything to protect this boiler, has it? And it's on the flow anyway, it's not on the return. So it's a pointless filter. So this is the debris that's come out of it so far. A few bits, but not enough to cause the noise we're getting. I'm gonna go and get some washers and o-rings from the van and uh, get this side of it back together because it's definitely the main heat exchanger. I will test it before I go drastic, but 100% it's going to be the main heat exchanger. I'd love to be proven wrong. Oh, I'm back up from the van. I'm out of breath. Okay, so, other people have been asking me about this. What O-rings and stuff I carry. This is my box. That's all the fibre washers in that little tub there because there isn't that, well, that's 90% of them. This is all O-rings. Lots and lots of O-rings of various different sizes. I carry all the valent ones. Any, any O-ring on a valent I've got here, and I've probably got a couple of bags of each. Same with fibre washers. Any fibre washer on a valent I have in that thing there. Because I tell you what, if you have the valent range of washers, there's very few boilers you can't fix. Same with O-rings. And valent are really easy. You order the O-ring, you get a pack of 10. And generally speaking, I can fix most boilers with that. I mean, there are a few things here. Look what that says. Pots and Performer, pump. The O-rings on the Performer, the two, they're, they're, an, they're not an odd size, but they're not a common size. So I have them separate. I just, as I go, if I think, oh, that's an odd washer, let me get, I'll order it and get it. And this is what I've built up over the years, and I promise you, there is just loads and loads and loads of Worcester stuff. So, I'm now going to get this rebuilt. This O-ring here, from the Valent pack, I mean, I've got away with it before using that one, but that's not the right O-ring, that's too big. It's a, it's a shiny, graphite coloured O-ring there. Be very careful with that, make sure you put the right one on there. So if you look at them washers, they are literally stuck in place with grease. Providing you get everything dry, they will stick in there and now stay in there, no, no bother at all, you know? This is how I put the thing in from below, the uh, clip for the uh, water pressure sensor in from below. I can't do it, I, I, I'm gonna have to zoom in with the camera, with the GoPro here, so the footage might get a bit grainy. So, I've got that clip held in place. Water pressure sensor in, clip in. Okay, once it pops out the top, pull the sensor out. That sensor will now hold the clip in place. When you fill it with water, the pressure acts on the sensor holds the clip in place. It'll never fall out the bottom. So there's that water pressure sensor now, and you can see the clip well, you can see the legs of the clip sticking out the top there. The clip now goes in from underneath, which, there you go, you can just see it there. Um, and so what you put that in and you make sure you pull the sensor forward, the sensor will hold the clip. If it's an old clip like this that you've had to straighten. We're in at the top, we're in at the bottom. This, can, this clip can here can be difficult to put back in. Sometimes I'll just use the, uh, I'll get it in the first holes, wiggle it to line it up with the second and then knock it in. That sounds crazy, but that's what you have to do sometimes. Get all the electrical connections back on, of course. So now I'm gonna test the boiler and see if it's repaired. I don't think it will be, but let's see. Okay, so topping up the boiler. So boiler's back together. Got some pressure in it. It's purging itself now of air. Just get a bit more pressure in there, put it at about 1.5 bar. Got a hot tap running downstairs. The boiler's still doing HP, that's heating purge. If I press I, it should move over then. You hear that suddenly air, it's doing SP, sanitary purge. So now the boiler is purging the plate heat exchanger and all the bits and bobs that I've just had apart. So I'm just going to look for some leaks. So far, so good. Got no water leaks in there. Have got a crying baby downstairs, but wifey's looking after me today. I've had breakfast up here, two cups of tea. Slowing me right down, but you know, 
she was definitely looking after me. Boilers on, running for hot water. Chimney sweep it. So if you chimney sweep a valent combi in hot water, that's max rate. Okay, it's the same as P1, providing it's on hot water. If it's a system boiler or a heat only boiler, chimney sweep isn't max rate. It's whatever the uh, partial load is set to in D0. We will see. I'm going to pause it here and I'll come back if it starts making a noise. This needs to get up to around 70 or 80 degrees here. I might wait actually, it's getting there quite quick. I will wait actually, it's getting there quite quick. Ooh. It's just uh My fan just pack up. No, that would be unreal. Did you see that? Did you hear that burner noise? Okay, so uh, let me know what you think happened in the comments below, and I'll try and get the next one edited and uh, uploaded ASAP. Thanks for watching.